I've designed this circuit to control the speed of motors using pulse width modulation uh, and I've made the circuit so that it can be configured to drive motors varying powers. Um, so in this video what I'll do is I'll go over the circuits that I've got here in their different configurations and then I'll show the circuit using the circuit to actually control the speed of various motors ranging from uh, very not very powerful motors to more powerful motors. Uh, and then finally I'll go over the circuit diagram and describe how the how the circuit works. So I've got three of the same circuit here, but in the circuits I've uh, got different components uh, to provide a different amount of power to drive them. Uh, and the advantage of doing that is I can use very small transistors here, which are probably about 5p each, and these are BC327s. Uh, and this can control a motor of up to 800 milliamps and 45 volts. Uh, but the advantage of this circuit is that, like I say, it's quite cheap, but it still drives a fairly powerful motor. And then the same design here, but as you can see, the, the diode I've got is more powerful here. So I can provide 10 amps uh, and I've got a um, a, uh, a dial into driver. It's a tip uh, 147, I think it is. And that can provide up to 10 amps of, of power as well. Uh, so this is more expensive because these probably cost about a pound each and I know these are these are more expensive than the smaller diode that which I've got on 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 this circuit but it can uh, the same circuit uh, but can power, power more powerful motors and then finally I've got uh, the circuit here now as you saw in the previous circuits um, this top part is configured so that you can put drive the power from the, one of the transistors on the flip-flop so I've still got a BC327 here but the, the other um, transistor in the flip-flop I've changed out to be a bigger power driver well on this circuit I've got two BC327s uh, so it's nice and cheap again from this uh, the flip-flop side of the circuit but what I'm doing is I'm driving a MOSFET here so I can uh, this MOSFET can drive up to I think it says about 50 amps or something. It's somewhere around 50 amps uh, and uh, something like 40 volts or something like that. I don't know, 70, 74 amps and 54 volts, something like that. Uh, so this should be able to uh, drive a much bigger motor. Uh, and on the back of the circuit, this is one of the modifications which I haven't actually put, implemented yet. Uh, I just needed to do a little circuit which drives the gate of the uh, the MOSFET. So that's been added to the circuit and that will be in the ones which I um, actually produce, the circuit boards. Uh, and also on the ones that I shall produce, I've put many of these MOSFETs in parallel, so which will help with uh, driving large motors as well. I've got an 18650 battery uh, with a boost converter boosting up to 12 volts. And I've got a 12 volt fan. Uh, I've got a RPM meter here which reads, because it's for a car and it's for it's configured for two cylinders, it reads half the value of the actual RPM. Uh, but I've got my circuit with my small transistors here. And if I start turning up the, um, turn up the pot, the fan starts kicking in there. And it's doing probably about 2000 RPM because like I say, it reads about half the value that it actually is. And if I keep um, turning the pot up, you see that the, the speed of the fan increases and it increases fairly linearly, linearly. it's up to 3000 so that would be 6000 rpm and, the, and the, this meter doesn't seem to read very well because I could hear this fan increases now and it dipped on the meter but never mind it just gives an idea that it is actually controlling the speed of the fan and you can actually hear the fan speeding up as well So it controls the fan quite well, this circuit. That's up to its maximum. So the maximum is probably about 13,000 uh, RPM for that fan. So I've got a 24 volt, 300 watt motor here. Uh, and I'm gonna power that using the uh, basic PWM motor controller that I've been showing and I've put four MOSFETs on this board now. I did have one MOSFET on the board because this should each each of these MOSFETs should be able to drive about over 70 amps and the motors probably in idle idle mode isn't going to be 
anywhere near up to maximum and um, it should only be a 12 or 13 amps at most the motor I think uh, so that's well onto 70 um, amps but I was blowing these I was wondering why I didn't realize that actually these motors when they start up they can take up to seven times their current so it, up in the 80 and 90 amps so that's why I was blowing these so I've put four in series here uh, sorry four in parallel here so it should be able to take up to 280 uh, amps the, the real solution would be to make some kind of current limiting device which hopefully I might do in the future uh, so that I can just use one MOSFET uh, and power it through a current limiting device and, and power the motor and then at start up it, it won't be able to pull uh, the full amount of power through it uh, but this is just the uh, the basic uh, flip-flop uh, but driving the MOSFETs there and I've got two lithium-ion batteries here so each of these is 12 volts well 11.1 but when they're charged up they're about 12 volts so this is 24 uh, volts at the minute because so I've got them in series and you, when you're using lithium-ion stuff you really need the fuse as well so I've got 10 amp fuse here because uh, you don't because uh, they'll just let out as much power as they can provide if you short the circuit and that it's probably pretty dangerous with these things and, and it could cause enough internal heat that these would burst into flames so definitely you need to use a fuse when using batteries like this uh, so when I plug this in and it's a bit um, tricky holding all this uh, with just two, two hands uh, so it powers the motor and these MOSFETs don't get at all hot because the heat's spread across four of them at the minute. Really should put them on the heat sink, but um, they seem okay. And I can just adjust the um, potentiometer to adjust the speed of the motor. So all the way down, and at the very bottom, it, it, you can hear it sort of just starting to move. So you have full control of the speed of the motor. A nice, really powerful motor being driven by a very small circuit, uh, and a few MOSFETs, which uh, don't even get don't even get warm. So I've got the um, circuit set up here. Where I've got 12 volts coming in. Uh, I'm displaying the output here on the on the oscilloscope. I'm taking the the output from. Uh, the, one of the gate controls on the one of the MOSFETs, so you can see how the um, how the waveform changes as I turn the potentiometer up. Uh, and at the very bottom, you see this slightly uh, eager to go, not fully off. As I turn it up, then it starts to do the PDM, PWM varying. The time base is fairly constant, probably shifts a little bit as it goes up, uh, but that's not an issue because the percentage of on and off uh, remains the thing which is varying. So in this particular application, as you see, as you get to the top, the time base changes fairly quite a bit. But uh, the yeah, percentage on and off is what's really important. And at the very top, it's just on fully. Um, so in this particular application, it's, it doesn't matter the time base changes a bit. It doesn't change that that much. Just uh, drifts a bit as it as it goes. But you get a nice square wave uh, off the flip flop circuit, uh, and it drives uh, the MOSFETs uh, perfectly fine. So this is uh, the circuit diagram for the motor controller, and at the heart of the circuit is a two transistor flip flop here. Now I used to use uh, create two transistor flip flops using the NPM transistors like this, where you've got the resistors up the top, which pull down through the power rails, and it creates the outputs from there. But because it's going through resistors, if you want to drive something like a charge pump here, you have to actually use drive-in transistors here to convert what's like a small signal into um, something which goes between the two rails, pulls between the two power rails directly. 
so you get a decent amount of power coming out. But I was using this circuit for a little while and I thought actually I don't need this circuit over here because I'm just using this is like the, the standard way that you tend to see uh, the flip flops with NPN transistors but actually what you can do which I've got at the top of the diagram here is you can use PMP transistors you just invert the circuit so you've got the resistors down the bottom and the PMP transistors at the top and when you do that when you tap out one of the signals it's being driven directly through the transistor from the positive rail so you don't need the, the actual driver circuits uh, so I convert, converted my charge pump circuit into this kind of uh, circuit where you're using PMP transistors rather than NPN and you can get rid of that whole driver circuit so that's what I've done in, in this mode controller uh, what I'm using is PMP or P-channel MOSFETs uh, not sorry, no, not, not MOSFETs over this side um, but PMP transistors and here I've got PMP uh, Darlington drivers so you can you can these are optional so you either have this transistor or this transistor depending on how much power you want to, to want to drive and the same here uh, and you can you can do all com combinations of those depending on uh, how powerful you want to drive uh, the motor um, if you're gonna output from this side which is the transistor output side um, but also, more important to me is the uh, MOSFET output side, which is over here. So I'm taking a feed from this, this side of the circuit. Uh, and it's uh, driving, uh, in this case, because these MOSFETs, uh, they require between 20, 10 and 20 volts on the gate in order to switch them. So I've got a Zener diode here, which limits it to 12 volts that it's going to control on the gate of the uh, MOSFET. So you don't overdrive the MOSFETs, and so you don't blow them that way so that's one way potentially you can blow them they can blow very easily if you put too much potential across in this case because they're p-channel between the power rail uh, and whatever you're gonna be driving at the bottom in which case this this is 12 volts from the power rail um, uh, so that, that's one way you can uh, blow them but also you can blow MOSFETs um, if you get volt because we're driving inductors you can, if you get voltage spikes coming back uh, reverse EMF coming back and you can kill the MOSFETs if you overrate them here so I think this these MOSFETs can take 50 something volts uh, but if the reverse EMF is greater than that you can blow them so I have sent the diodes here uh, I think the ones I put in my circuit are 36 volts um, but as long as they're below the rating of the MOSFET then that should hopefully protect them against reverse spikes and of course then there's the other one which I blew a few of these MOSFETs uh, finding out which is uh, when the motor if you've got a big motor uh, and the motor starts it can take up to seven times the amount of current that the motor would normally take when it's running uh, and so I overrated my single MOSFET by um, which could should be able to take 70 something amps uh, but obviously it was going over that and it was taking more like 80 or 90 amps uh, when the motor was trying to start and I was blowing them so I put four in in, par in, uh, in parallel sorry uh, uh, and then I can take up to four times uh, the 70 amps roughly uh, and that that's a perfect solution but also I think the better solution is just to use one MOSFET and have some kind of current limiting device which I'll, I'll look into later